Hi folks, welcome back to my channel and I have to find my microphone. Hang on. Hi folks, welcome back to Visits with Soxy Nana Alice. I'm Alice, your yarn host today, and I'd love to welcome you here around the craft table down in the crafting room. So we're home now, and uh, yeah, welcome back everybody. Thanks so much for sticking around this summer, and hopefully I will get lots of crafting videos up for you this fall and winter. Okay, so to start off, where you can find me all over the interwebs as Soxy, Soxy Nana or Soxy Nana Space Alice. And you can email me or comment below. The email is SoxyNanaAlice at gmail.com. And yeah, you can leave a comment and leave a like and subscribe. And I've had so many, so many new subscribers over the summer. It's been just wonderful. Thank you so much for dropping in and saying hi and and supporting this little channel of mine um yeah i lost my mic so we are winging it with our mic today without a mic today and i am going to uh have to look into getting another one maybe i'll get a wireless one this time i think i left it out at the trailer though so it's like Arr. anyways folks um yeah this is a as usual just a heavily knitting youtube uh podcast channel and uh, yeah, so all of you that are here for the first time, welcome. Welcome back to all my OGs. Thank you so much for coming and spending uh, your precious time with me. And yeah, I, uh, I'm over a thousand subscribers now, not monetized because I don't have the hours, the watch hours or something. I'm not really interested in doing any of that stuff. In fact, I might just split this channel up and do a sewing section too. So because I've been getting into some sewing. Anyways, let us uh, start off with all of the nitty goodness first, and then we'll get into some, maybe a book I'm getting into reading. It's really good. And I will share that with that information with you. And also, um, I, got the, I got sewing. I got some sewing. I've been doing that. Oh, I got to get my hair cut totally the, now that we're back. And uh, yeah. Anyways, this is going to be a hodgepodge because I just decided to just go for it today. I am going to be a day or two late. I'm going to go back to my usual Tuesday schedule. I'll be dropping it uh, central, uh, central Standard Time. It'll be at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. That's when I was usually um, podcasting or dropping my videos last year and the year before. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. So bear with me today because I'm really rusty when it comes to doing the standard podcasting and I am going to get into a lots of knitting stuff. So here we go. All right. I have got, oh, I got um, FOs. Let's start with finished objects first, okay? I'm sure you know I have been working on my socks. Here's my Novita Seven Brothers socks and I'm using the Novita Basic Sock Pattern. For these and I will put all the all the information is in my Ravelry pages so I will put the Ravelry page link down below and yeah that's so I've got two of those and these are gifts for Christmas and I've been just putting all of my socks into the uh, Ravelry uh, um, threads that are all out there the make alongs and the knit alongs so yeah this is a navy color and this is a gray, and I used a nylon thread for the heels and the toes. So this is for a young man, so I wanted to make sure that they last him a while. This is Novita Seven Brothers. I'll show you the ball band in a second, I hope. I believe I have one here. Nope, of course I don't, because I'm winging it today. So I've got one pair. I did a... I believe I did a 50, 56 stitch because this is a worst, a heavy DK, almost a worsted. And I it's on 3.5 millimeter needles. I did a 72 stitch, did a bunch of ribbing for the top and I alternated, had to alternate it because now these uh, seven brothers used to come in 150 gram balls. Now they're in 100 gram balls. 
So I barely got this whole these this whole pair of socks out of the navy. So it was good that I had picked up the gray. This uh, wool I got when I was out in uh, Stony Plains, Alberta, at Joe's uh, Joe's Garden. So yeah, that's those ones. And I'm going to take these off the sock blocker. Put that there gently. Hopefully, don't shake you. Okay, and I got a pink pair. Oh, isn't this gorgeous? I don't even remember what this is called. You guys are going to have to look them up on my on my uh, Ravelry. I got two of these, and this is another gift. In fact, that's for the wife of the young man I'm making the navies for. And again, I used a nylon thread. You can pick these up in little tiny um, uh, spools and wherever you can get your, your uh, sock wool. And yeah, it's a nylon thread. And you put it in there and see how it variegates in. So yeah, it gives a little bit of extra strength with the extra nylon. I put them in the toes as well. And this one was actually more of a red, but that's okay. They're just boot socks for the winter. Novita Nell, Seven Brothers again. Beautiful. And I used the gray. So I have a little bit of the gray left. But I have and a little bit of the purple or this magenta kind of color. So yeah, if you check my Ravelry notes, the, all the information is in there. So yeah, now I can tuck these away because these are going to be going out for Christmas gifts this year. So I'll tuck those into my bin. Do you guys have a little bin too? I have a bin just for like all those Christmas gifts that are coming up. Okay, so what else have I got that's a finished object? Um, let's see. Hmm. I have a half finished. I don't know if I, I think I half finished this. It was the mother-in-law's sock, Mother's Day socks, sorry. By Nina Latvinen. Okay, so I think I showed you these last time I was podcasting. I'm not quite sure. But I have gotten this one. I think, I, oh, maybe I was up to here. Maybe I was just done the beginning ribbing of this uh, of this one. Maybe. That's the back. That's where the stitch marker was, though. And now I've gone ahead and gone all the way down. And I've turned the heel. And now I'm on to the foot section. So this is actually won't take me too long. But I have been putting it off. It's only for Christmas, too, so. I'm in no rush for these, so this is a Christmas gift. I wanted the vanilla socks, those those thicker weight, just to go quick because I've been doing a lot of color work. You'll see, you'll see. So yeah, so this is done in that Patton's Astra, which is 100% um, 100 acrylic. And oh my God, it is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Once these are all done, I, I'll take a picture on the person that I give gifting them to. I'll take a picture of uh, her wearing them because they are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. She can hardly wait to. So that's a half finished. Oh, I do have my uh, a half finished of my coordinating socks. Yeah, here's my here's one. So this is, let's see if I got the ball down for this one. Yes, I do. This is Barocco Socks. And this is in colorway number 14105. And isn't that cool? It made me think of like, I don't know, leopard print, but in a kind of a funky purpley pink pastel way. Just love it. And I'm using the stitch markers to count my rows on my foot because next up is the foot. I'm doing these top down and I'm doing a shadow wrap heel with some one by one ribbing at the top and I actually started it with a kind of a gold color so that it would be just in case they didn't match and they did match so they match actually really perfect which I was really shocked about even the bottom heel has got this dark black and the purples so yeah these are really Really matching. I'm I'm amazed. Totally amazed. Uh, so yeah. So that one I'm I've turned and now I'm working on the foot. These are going to be for me. I'm going to do um, a sock knit along, starting I think in December, maybe January. Anyways, I want to do a pair of socks a month, and I think Diane from My Pink Bathtub is going to join me in that endeavor. That'll be fun. So yeah, so that's uh, that's half finished. Oh, I got one more half finished sock. So I was working on Walter's 
socks and I finished remember I cut the tops off of all of his socks that I needed for those of you who who uh, haven't watched recently Walter is my sock murderer he's my partner in crime here and he definitely likes to murder his socks and I cut the tops off of all of his boot socks that he wears uh, during the winter time around the house. They're kind of like a slipper sock. I make him, they're called Prairie Vamps. Again, in my Ravelry pages, guys. But I, uh, I, I put a, a question out there, what should I do? Should I actually mend them? These socks were so overly mended, the bottoms weren't even original anymore. So yeah, everybody said, yeah, just cut them off. And I cut the ribbing off the top because of course I hate ribbing. Like I'm not good at ribbing this heavy. This is Briggs and Little Tuffy wool. It's quite thick. And I'm finding the thicker wool with the bigger needles are really giving me a hard time. Um, so yeah, I decided I would start by, um, where's the other one? Oh, it must be upstairs. I have two pair gray and this navy and so I decided to just go ahead and knit another vanilla sock on the bottom of this ribbing so the ribbing started out and then I cut them off and I just picked the stitches back up for the ribbing went ahead and did a heel flap and gusset and turned the heels and I did try to um, make sure that the bottoms are perfect here around the corners because I wanted to make sure that they hold up a bit and yeah, that's uh, a nice big 13 and a half men's foot, buddy. Oh, he's got such a big tootsie. So yeah, yeah. So I've started doing those and it's hard on the hands though. And I'm actually using DPNs. I'm surprised they're not here because I'm keeping these in my, um, in the bag I got for Christmas, a Christmas gift last year from Diane from My Pink Bathtub. Go over her and check her out. She's almost to a thousand guys. Give her a subscribe, eh? Give her a like and tell her I sent you. So she gave me this bag with full of wool for Christmas last year. And uh, and yeah, I've been using it to keep Walter's uh, sock tops in. Yeah, I've, uh, I thought I had the needles here. Anyways, I'm using DPNs, which is unusual for me. Here's his foot. I use this as my as my template for this man's foot and yes yeah, so yeah that's uh Briggs and Little's Tuffy and this is the oatmeal color actually and yeah I'm getting uh getting through those and I almost finished a whole a whole uh half a skein for one foot so I'm gonna have to pick up another one for the other pair and yeah that's uh that's my half finished objects oh and I got finished objects but they're in this in the uh in the uh, stitching, in the uh, sewing part. So I'll show you those in a minute too. Oh, see this? It's a hint. It's a hint. Ah, oh, so, okay. So that's it for finished objects and half finished objects. Sorry if I'm rushing. By the way, pour yourself something from the little orange teapot. See how screwed up I am today? Unbelievable. I'm in using my Soxy Nana mug. I got this from Knit Swag. Very nice. Mm. I poured myself some tea from the little orange teapot. Help yourself, guys. Okay, so I got two main projects that I'm working on that uh, the biggies. One, you already have seen a bunch of times. And this is my second go round at the Gaudy Cardi by Julie Nitz in Paris. Do I have a picture of her? Yes, I do. By Julie Nitz in Paris. It's black and white. Sorry, guys. She did hers in red. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. And I've been working a little bit. I've been getting there. This, I am absolutely adoring this color work on this one. Oh, look at this. This is the back. Actually, this is the back. Look at that. Look at how gorgeous that is. It is so beautiful. I am over the moon happy with this guys there's the front this is a steaked cardigan and you know me I love to get into my knitting and here's the steak stitches down the front this is where I was right here and look at that Isn't that gorgeous it is so beautiful this is Manjusha Fiber Arts this is her golden hour colorway I stole it from my Shima sweater 
because I ripped that back. I'm going to remake that one though. And I'm, I had already made this in kind of a light blue, but God, the color work didn't show up. But look at this, guys. Isn't this gorgeous? See any mistakes? Better not. No mistakes. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. I'm making the XL, 1X, I mean. But I will add more stitches under the arms because that's what I usually do. And because it's a cardigan, I'm not too worried about short rows around the bust or bust starts or anything. Because it, I probably won't even close it. I'll probably leave it open. Look at the colors in that. Looks like a stained glass window, right? This isn't even blocked. Can you imagine when I steam it up? Oh, it's going to just pop. Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. This is my favorite. This so far. Working on this right now is my fave. And I'm using the Drops Nord in this beautiful uh, Midnight Ocean color. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love this wool, guys. So much nicer than the um, Drops Flora. This is a Drops Flora I have on this sweater. This is my Cersei Rocket, <laughs> the, the, my own, my own, uh, my own mocked up pattern. But yeah, I totally love this Drops Nord much nicer. It is so much softer. And this is the Manjusha Fibers. Can you see? Actually, see, I made it with this wool before and it just didn't do it justice. But now in here, oh, oh, gorgeous. So this is living in my, uh, oh, I'll show you Manjusha. Tammy Ivanko here. She's from here. I'll just kind of get behind there. Yeah. Is that showing up? She's uh, local here to us. She is in Lorette, Manitoba. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous wool she has. Beautiful. I'm working actually with some of her fiber right now, and I'm doing a little bit of a spin. And uh, yeah, I haven't finished it, though. It's been taking me a while to get caught up. I seem to have too many too many uh, irons in the fire right now. And ah, uh, my bra. I don't wear bras. I wear these, uh, what are they, sports bras, right? Anywho, so that's one F uh, whip I'm working on. Whip. Okay, this is my next one, guys. Okay, I don't know if I told anybody this yet from my bunch, but I'm doing a test knit. Now, I was accepted to do a test knit for one of one of my favorite designers, she does the Shima sweater. She did the Swima Shima sweater, and her name is um, Beatrice Macy, and she's over in France. Oh my goodness, you guys! Totally love her patterns. I gotta pull out the picture here. I've got, and I'm allowed to show you. It's not a secret test knit. And here you go, guys. Look at this. Is that not cool? Can you just make that out? It's called the H sweater. Now, it's a combination of texture and long sleeves and with <laughs> texture and color work, stranded color work with long sleeves and a, and a uh, double folded collar. It's so nice. I saw it and I thought, I really want to do that. Remember, I've got the, all that wool from uh, the lady from my knitting group. Uh, Maria and I was going to make the um oh that that color work one with the little fo little foxes around it from the petite knitter the petite knitter and I got the pattern I won I won a free pattern from someone's channel don't remember way back and so I bought it well I get it and it's a bottom up and it's a fingering weight and it's a whole bunch of stitches and I got all this wool from Maria and I thought this would be great, except because the body is all one color and these skeins, they don't really like, I don't know if you can see, like they're not really the same color, right? They're close, but not perfect. And I thought it's going to be a lot to make a solid body um, to use this, this, these skeins of wool and they're just slightly off each one of them is just a little bit different it's going to be so difficult to color manage it and i'd have to be doing a lot of making sure i'm alternating skeins and i might even had to, might even had to have alternated three skeins and i mean two is sometimes bad enough so i thought well maybe i need something in a color work and when this sweater popped up on my instagram 
I said, absolutely. Beatrice, please, I want to take get in on this test knit. And these will be perfect because it really doesn't matter. With the um, alternating, I can alternate skeins. I can do them all in one, whatever. So I went ahead and started. And so I have a, a lighter color and a darker color. And actually, you know what? When I first did the uh, started doing it, I thought, oh, it's not enough of a contrast. But, you know, I think it's going to work out pretty nice in the end. So I started with a gauge swatch, of course. Yes, I did a gauge swatch. And I washed and blocked it. And see, it's just enough of a contrast, right? It's not overbearing, like it's not black and white. But it's a nice, it's kind of pulled out of shape because it got sucked up in the vacuum. Shh, don't tell anybody. I accidentally dropped it. And then Walter went and back, tried to vacuum it up with our Dyson. <laughs> I think it should be that. Okay, so yeah. So I started off doing some of the, and the color work is turning out pretty good. This is just a row of, uh, row of some texture just to separate the, the solid with, because I was using the different size needles. Because you need a couple sizes of needles to do to do this. So yeah, so it's, it's called the H sweater. Look for that. I think this test is going to go to the end of November. So this will probably be out for Christmas. I'm hoping so. So let's get the right side here. Okay, I got it on a fairly short needle. And I've got over 500 and change stitches on here. So I have started. So I finished the texture section up here. Yes, remind me, I don't really like purling when I'm doing ribbing in the round, but it's really cool. Love the way she does the increases. And I do a lifted increase. When I'm doing an increases that are in a yoke, I do a, um, I think it's uh, Arn and Carlos do it. It's, they lift that leg from the bottom of the stitch up, pull it up and knit through the bottom, knit through that previous row to make the extra stitch. And that way there's never a hole where you have the increases. It's it's nice and tight. So you see, you can't even see if there's any increases in there, hey? But we really need to wash and block this. And yeah, here's here's the start of the beautiful co uh, contrast. The color work starting to show up. So yeah, I'm really pleased, very pleased with this. It's taking a while, 500 stitches going around. I mean, it takes me about an hour to do two rows. So half an, a row, a half an hour. Half an hour, a row, whatever. Anyways, hope you can hear me, guys. I'm just really praying you guys can hear me. I'm going to have to turn this up because, uh, like I said, I've lost my, my uh, microphone. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm getting there with this. This is taking me a while because I'm really trying to make sure that I go through and I'm actually using the pattern um, at uh, the uh, paper pattern. And I'm not going to show you the chart because it is going to be a paper pattern. But I do do a lot of writing. And, and I'm going to say this right now. This pattern is for intermediate to advanced uh, knitters, okay? Um, the way it's written up, it's very well, very well written, um, as in as is all of her patterns. However, the, it does assume that you know quite a bit about knitting already. OK, like you are you are a, a sweater knitter, um, partly because it says, you know, wherever you're comfortable uh, with the length, approximately 10 inches, flip your sleeves. So in other words, it, it's, it's assuming that you definitely know your size, how you like your, how you like to wear your sweater, that you've worn sweaters or made sweaters that fit you well before so that you can kind of gauge and you know the measurements of what you're going to be doing um, in the sweater before you actually do the stuff as well. Like, so for example, that's, you know, like where you're going to split for sleeves and you know when you want the length and what have you so yeah it's not what holding your hand like a beginner pattern okay also she says to do you know uh around this around this top row there's the increase section uh increase 60 stitches let's say okay but there's how many hundred on there already and where do i do the stitches to increase so what i went ahead and did was i sent her the link, which I will put in the my description below, 
the link to the knitting calculator that I use, which tells you you have you, your original stitches. I believe it's you put in your original stitches and you put in how many you want to increase and then it will tell you uh, or the other way around how many stitches you want it to in, you know, no, no, I'm sorry, back up, skip that. It's your original stitches and then how many you want to increase and then hit calculate and it'll spit out the formula and it'll tell you knit five, increase one, knit 10, increase one do that five times or whatever to make the, it gives you the formula basically for increasing um, equal, equal, equal distant around your yoke. Okay. And it does it for decreases as well. So I will link that information below and it works perfect. So, you know, that's something, you know, you have to be comfortable with being able to go in and if you miss a stitch, fudge it in somewhere or what have you, if you do too many, knit it together, whatever. You know what I'm getting at? Okay, so it is definitely an intermediate for sure. And maybe even an advanced in some places. So anyways, to the other day, I had, oh, and I will put a picture and I will put all the links to Beatrice below as well. Okay, and all of her stuff. Uh, I, had, I had featured her when I was doing the Shima sweater and she actually had some patterns that I was able to gift away here on the channel. And hopefully maybe I'll have to, I'll get her to uh, share this pattern um, as a gift away on my show for this actual sweater, if you're at all interested in Chris at Christmas time. Anyway, so I was had a friend over uh, for coffee the other night, a needy friend, and look what she gave me. Oh my God, I was just, and I just finished saying, when you're using a paper pattern, you want to, uh, and you're using a chart, I'm not going to show you the chart, but you like to be able to like cross off or, or follow along with your charted line. Look what she gave me. Isn't that cute? It's a ruler, but look, it's, it's magnet. It's a magnet ruler. So let's see if I can put it on, on a piece of paper that here, I'll put it on Julie knits in Paris. Right. And it even goes through a couple of, a uh, couple of sheets. Look at that. Nice, huh? I love it. And and then you can just slide it up and down. And she showed me on oh, this little, little bumblebee on there. Look at the little bumblebee cute. Okay, so she told me that if you put your pattern, which I'm going to do today because I'm, I'm downstairs here. I've got uh, some page protectors. Put it in a page protector and then it'll slide up and down so much easier. It's what a great idea. Like, so yeah, this is so cute. So she was down in the States for, I don't know, a weekend or something. Anyway, she saw them and she grabbed me one. Isn't that great? And I just finished saying to myself, gee, I wish I had something like a magnet slider or something. I used to make these when I was doing a lot of cross stitching. I used to make them out of the um, magnets that you have on your fridge that are like a big slab magnet for like... Um, Oh, they used to have like dates or whatever, like a calendar one on. And I used to cut it up and tape it up and whatever. But this one came already done. And it's got a really nice one foot, 12 inch calendar on it. Or 12 inch uh, ruler along the top. I thought that was so cool. Thank you so much, sweetie. So I, uh, yeah. So as I was saying, I'm working on this uh, H sweater. And yeah, that's taking up a lot of my time in the evening. It's a lot of... Uh, making sure that you follow, I've been following the graph pattern. It's not intuitive. You have to follow the pattern. And there's, there might be a couple of rows that are the same. And then all of a sudden it'll jog over, it'll change, but it's really cool. Very geometric. I noticed that, um, if you read up on Beatrice, she definitely goes all into the architecture of buildings and what have you. And it shows in her, in her, uh, modular knitting and in her, uh, different kinds of color work that she does and beautiful work, beautiful work. So yeah, so I think that's it for my knitting right now. I don't have any other knitting that I'm currently working on. That's enough. I mean, I just finished the saw, all the socks and I think I finished another pair of socks in there too, but, um, I don't remember which ones they were and I think I might've already put them away. So yeah. So now we're home from the trailer and I did talk to you before that I did get a pattern and I think it was through, um, because of Anne. Thank you, Anne Hunt from, uh, from, uh, Toby Knits. 
she got me totally interested in doing this beautiful um beautiful cross stitch and i don't know if i have oh well first off what did i make i made myself thank you and for the inspiration i made myself a cross stitch bag yeah i went ahead and i'll put the link below for the tutorial that i used and it was on youtube of course and I just used, this is actually an old sheet that I had, a cream colored sheet that was, wasn't even old, it was brand new. But I mean, I wasn't, I did, wasn't using it for my bed because it was for a single bed. So I swiped the material and then I've got, I finally found the leftover material of this beautiful butterfly pattern that I got in the summertime. And I put a, found a zipper I had kicking around. I mean, I keep zippers from everything. If I send something off to the, a lot of times from this for the second hand store, I will actually just steal the zippers, the buttons, whatever. And yeah, so yeah, this is a nice big pouch bag. And I use some fusible, um, fusible fleece for the lining. And yeah, I, uh, I went ahead and did that because this is the pattern I'm going to do. Now, can I show you without giving away too much? It's called Eat, Sleep, Craft, Repeat by Stitch Rovia. And I downloaded this, bought this pattern and downloaded it. It's not in color. Sorry, guys. I'll put a color picture up here of it or up here somewhere. You know, I'm in the middle. So anywhere here. So, yeah, I started, I bought that. It's a one page PDF. It's a download. And yeah, so I was talking to Anne and, and when she was at my, at my, uh, came to visit me at the trailer there via, via, um, via StreamYard. I, uh, she said she'd send me her, her leftover threads because we thought it was the same pattern. Well, it's not the same pattern. And actually, she sent me uh, a couple of the pages from her pattern, but not the actual pattern. She It was just the information on the color chart, the threads for the, for the picture. And I, um, yeah, they turned out to be not the same. The, the, it is a different pattern, but same concept. So yeah, she sent me these beautiful threads. So I am going to use these and then I'm going to, because mine has a few extra threads in it, I'm going to add to it to, uh, to fill in, you know, where the gaps are with my pattern. But yeah, basically it's, I thought that was nice and I'm going to put it right here, right above my head when I'm done. And yeah, so I was inspired to make a beautiful bag. And then when she sent me the thread, what did she go and send me? Oh, Anne, you're such a sweetheart. She sent me this little thread keeper bag pouch. And look at that. Is that not adorable? It's got a fox grabbing a pheasant, chasing the pheasant. And this, you put, you know, you just sit this beside you. But look, at, it's got a little Toby Knits tag up here. Oh, I got my cross stitch needle there. Little Toby Knits tag. She sells on Etsy, guys. I'll put her link below. And yeah, I can hold totally use a bull nose clip and clip it to the uh, the the my craft cart beside my beside my uh, craft chair there, and I will put all my little thread ends in there and wool ends. Yeah, so yeah, you can fold it down and it holds, stands up all by itself. So well made, beautiful job, and it's all padded. Yeah, so it can be a little thread bucket. Isn't that cool? I just love it. There we go. Nice stuff, huh? Okay, so thank you, thank you, Anne. Love it to death. Love it, love it, love it. So yeah, so in my bag, I got all my goodies. got my eight o'clock, and I got my hoop. I'm using a hoop, because I don't. my eight o'clock's not that big. And I've got, I don't, thought I had a needle minder, but I have this little fox one, but I've lost the magnet off the back. So now I gotta find magnets. Oh well. Until then, we go old school, and I'll just weave the, the needle into the eight o'clock as I go. So I'm going to put all my stuff away. That's from Stitch, like I said, that's an Eat, Sleep, Craft, Repeat by Stitch, Stitch Rovia. I don't know if, where she's from. Does it say here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, but it's on Etsy. Copyright Emma Gongden. I don't know where she's she's hails out of, but you know, if you look her up on Etsy, I'm sure there's information. And yeah, so I was working on that, working on sewing that. So I was getting a little bit of sewing done, 
Hold on, I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee or tea. Mm. Okay. Last but not least, I was also doing some stitching. And remember, I was asking what you thought of my needle, my little needle minders. And uh, yeah, so this is mine here. And see, I put a little piece of rec rack on there, and it's got a little popper. And then you, I can, I write all over mine. I write whatever with just a pen. Those um, erasable pens, those friction pens. I write the size that's in there of my knitting needles. So what I've gone and done is I've made up six of these in kind of Christmassy colors. And I was thinking I might even, I have some of this material left that has little stitches, this knit stitches in gray and red. And I was thinking maybe I'll make a couple of bags and maybe for the, um, the knit along in, in December, I'll do a bit of a giveaway. What do you guys think? Would you guys be interested? And these ones are all the same size and you can put multiple needles in here. I should grab, let's see what I've got here. Where's my, here are my socks. I'll grab my socks. See? Now, I was asked if you could put your, if you could put your needles in here while you're working. Well, I, I don't. Typically I do this, like I just have, you know, stitch toppers. But let's see if we could put them on. I guess you could put them on here somehow. So what you're going to do is wrap it around somehow like that. Can you grab one? Because you don't, you don't want it to come off. So they're going to go like that. Okay, so yeah, you can do it. Yeah, there you go. There, it does, it works. So you can be, you could have them here, almost one piece. Well, I'd still put my stitch choppers on them though because you know, they're sharp, right? But yes, you could definitely do that. And then you could keep it together, keep it all together. But they are typically just for the needles. I mean, that's the most, most useful for me is once they're not on the needles and once the needles are off of my project, I twine them up and put one down each side and then snap it up. And then I also have a little tag on the bottom. I didn't bring mine down. I'll put a picture here of what they look like when they're all on a carabiner or on a hoop. And then you can keep them all together and you can just pick them up and throw them in your bag. I also keep one with every, um, uh, with every one of my project bags. If I've got a couple like, okay, so this one here, with this, I've got the needles here, and then I've got um, a set, the set that I'm using for the ribbing. And I keep them like this, and this is how it works, you see? So you have your long cord, and you just roll it up, put them into the needle, into the holder, like so. There you go. Snap it closed. And you can make it smaller if you want. Like I don't make typically go too many times because I don't want my uh, wire or my cord to accidentally kink. Where did I go? Whoop. Snap. Come on. Oh, it is snap. Eh. Okay. See? And that's it. Can you just work like that? And you can hang it by this or, well, this one doesn't have a tag on it because this is one I keep in my bag. Right. I always keep one in my bag just in case I need to keep an extra set of needles handy. OK. OK, so that's that's more of my finished objects. I was just in a total mood to get some sewing done. I thought, hey, I'm going to make some of these. So cool. That's it. I have uh, a project I want to get started now two is I want to start my make 12 or make nine, make 12 for 2025. I want to start putting stuff together. I want to do a love note. Yes, it'll be my very first love note. Thank you very much. I have so many rocketees and so many ranunculuses. Now I think it's time to dive into the love note by Tin Can Knits. I'm not exactly sure what wool I'm going to use for it yet. 
I've got stuff that I can get into it. I want to make that beautiful bee pillow that I'm, oh, that beautiful bee pillow, excuse me, by Mona from Bunny Muff um, Designs. And I want, I, okay, I went all out and I decided I'm going to do a mystery knit, okay? I have total anxiety over this, guys, totally. So Mona put out on Instagram that she was going to do a cowl slash um, uh, scarf mystery knit for October. And here, I'm going to grab the little bit of the details, okay? I know I didn't write this down and I wasn't going to tell you about this because I'm totally having, totally having mystery anxiety over this. And I think I'm going to use these minis right here. I think I'm going to use these minis to do the cowl. Okay, got to work it out because I need like a whole bunch of different colors. So she's on Ravelry. She's doing it on Ravelry. I will put the link below to her Ravelry if you want to get in. I mean, they just started today. So um, I'm pretty sure that it, it'll be okay to uh, to start a day late. Won't hurt or a couple days late. Okay, so Mr. Cowl. And it is the... Mary Somerville Mystery Cowl Slash Scarf, okay, by B Mona Mona Zilla from Bunny Muff Knit Patterns, okay, and it's a summer, from Mary Somerville was a scientist and mathematician and more during the 19th century, and it is, looks like it's based on all of that, and honestly, it was a buck to join in, one dollar, okay, so, I mean, that's just to hold you to it, right? But it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors. Yeah, eight colors, okay? Holy moly, I, I got 14 in here. I think I can get away with it. What do you think? So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to get pre pull out some, um, uh, some, and it says jumper weight. What is two, two-ply jumper weight? Is that fingering or is that DK? I don't know. See, sock weight to me is four ply. So is two ply DK? If it's DK, I'm kind of screwed. But it does ask for jumper weight by Jameson and Smith, light fingering. Okay, so it is light fingering. Okay, so they they think jumper weight is light fingering. Anyways, boy, it is ever bright with my ah sorry guys. Yeah, no, um, so yeah, so yeah, get I'm gonna jump in this. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I gotta pull out my colors and I'm gonna be like a day or two behind. On purpose this but they but they it i think there's four times this month she's sending out the mystery information not quite sure this is my first i don't usually like stuff like this but i really really want to make myself a cowl that was kind of like the thing for it as soon as i thought i went oh i really want a cowl and yes i want color work because i'm totally into color work right now anyways i digress so you want to know what i'm reading i Okay, it's called Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. It is really good. It's got kind of like two timelines moving together. And uh, yeah, it's it's actually pretty good. It's kind of, of of a mystery and I'm not really a big mystery, but I think I've already figured it out. I mean, it wasn't that hard. And even when in the very beginning, when they said they had a secret, when the woman said she had a secret, I knew what her secret was. I just don't know why, but I just kind of knew. Anyways, yeah, so it's called uh, Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. And yeah, I totally recommend And I'm only on, on chapter 10, but it's like I'm totally binging it because it's very good. It's very good. And it's just something different. Um, I am ca still catching up on all of my summer podcasts that I've been on my regular podcasts that I usually watch. And yeah, so I'd, and I'd like to really say hi to everybody out there that's not feeling very well, that's under the weather. If they've got health issues, I'm sending out mm, sending out all my love and hugs and uh, definite uh, best wishes to get better soon. There's uh, kind of a few of you guys out there. It's crazy. Friends, family, what have you. So yeah, please, please feel better soon. Yeah, so I think I'm done for today for now. I'm uh, I'm really going to close this. I'm going to close this off now because I got next week to, to catch up uh, on all kinds of stuff with you too. I'm still catching up on all of my, you know, laundry and what have you from the trailer and kind of still at loose ends with a lot of stuff. Went and visited the kids this past weekend, my grandkids, my daughters, everybody. 
getting all that squared away. Um, yeah, digging out the calendar for the fall and making sure that everybody's on the list for maybe getting together for cards or for coffee or for a swim or, and I want to start playing pickable. Wow, I'm all over the place here, you guys. It's unbelievable. Okay, so let's uh, let's sign off now. And I'd love you guys to come back in a week and join me. I will be here. Like I said, I'm going to start uh, going back to the regular Tuesday morning drop for my videos and hope to see you there. Take care. Happy knitting. Happy crafting. And have a great week. Love you all, guys. Knit with love. Mwah. Bye now.